In the previous two sessions, we had an introduction to missing data. So, we discussed when a statistical data contains a missing data in the sense that one of the or uh, one or more of the cells of a data matrix has no value in it. And then we discussed what are the general ways of dealing with missing data. We also discussed the model based techniques to deal with missing data. So, how to construct the likelihood for missing data by using a missing data indicator. In this session, we would be dealing with the complete case analysis for missing data as well as the available case analysis for missing data. We would take an example and we would estimate what is the me estimated value for the population mean as well as the population variance or variance covariance matrix when one or more data is missing. complete case analysis for missing data. Suppose, there are n subjects with an expected p measurement per subject, but there might be some subjects which might contain less than p measurements. So, here we would discard any subject with n i, where n i is number of observations for the ith subject is less than p. Then we have a set of complete cases denoted by NCC. So, the complete data response looks like N i c that is for the ith one is i runs from 1 to n i n i equal to p is equal to summation i runs from 1 to n an indicator of whether r i is 1 where r i is r i 1, r i 2, r i n i. Now, here an estimate of the population mean mu is mu hat c c, which is equal to i runs from 1 to n capital I that is the indicator of r i equal to 1 into y i star by i runs from 1 to n indicator of r i equal to 1, which comes down to i runs from 1 to n summation of the p cross 1 vectors with component y i observed and any arbitrary value for y i miss and that is represented by y i star. So, basically y i star for all those i's where we have at least n i measurements divided by n c c, where n c c represents the number of complete cases. Similarly, sigma hat c c comes out to be y i star minus mu c c hat into y i star minus mu c c hat transpose, but the sum is over all those products, all those y i's for which the condition is satisfied. The condition being that n i is equal to p and the divisor here in this case is n c c minus 1. Now, there is a result that if the data is m c a r that is missing completely at random, then the complete case estimator is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu and the complete case estimator for the sample for the population variance covariance is an unbiased estimator of, of the population variance covariance. So, expectation of mu hat c c the proof is that the expectation of mu hat c c is expectation over the term 1 by n c c summation i equal to 1 to n i r i equal to 1 into y i star that means all those y i's which satisfies our condition. And if we just follow the steps, the steps are provided here. So, it leads to the fact that the expectation turns out to be mu. So, 
we can say that mu a mu hat c c is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu provided the data is missing completely at random. We can have a similar proof for the variance covariance matrix also. Now, the advantage of this approach the complete case approach is that it is easy, but the problem is that it is not fully efficient and it is not applicable to data if it is not missing completely at random. Available case analysis. For the available case analysis, what happens is we can define a mu j hat and sigma i j hat of the same form, but this time we are keeping an indicator vector of r i j equal to 1 into y i j star. That means, we are only including all those j's. So, we are including the sub or the cases for the subjects where the condition is satisfied n i equal to p condition is satisfied. And then we have the estimator as written here of mu j hat and sigma i j hat. But the problem here is that each estimator is based on a different set of subjects because this is dependent on the j's. Similarly, we can uh, sorry it is dependent on the i's. Similarly, we can define covariance of sigma j j prime and also we can see that it is dependent on the i's. So, mu j hat star is equal to mu j hat is based on i such that i r i j equal to r i j prime equal to 1. And here rho j j prime comes out to be sigma j j prime by root over sigma i j into sigma i j prime. Now, it does not guarantee the fact that the rho j j prime would be or the correlation between the jth and the j primeth observation of the ith value satisfies the condition that it is between minus 1 to plus 1. The advantage of available case analysis is that it is more efficient than the complete case, but it is biased and sigma hat may not be positive semi definite. So, we want sigma hat to be positive semi definite, but here we cannot guarantee that sigma hat would be PST. Now, one more idea in this context is factoring the likelihood. So, if we note the missing data mechanism and think that L theta given y observed is a complicated function, but let psi which is a function of the theta is an alternative parametrization and phi is a one to one monotone function of theta. So, then it is possible to write L phi given y observed is equal to L 1 phi 1 given y observed plus L j phi j given y observed. So, this phi can be distinct parameters such that the joint parameter space of phi which is phi 1 to phi j is the product of the individual parameter spaces for phi j. j runs from 1 to capital J. So, here L phi given y observed can be maximized by maximizing L j which is phi j given y observed separately. So, instead of maximizing the entire likelihood, I we can go for piecewise maximizations of the part of the likelihood. For example, we can maximize L 1 phi 1 given y observed plus L 2 phi 2 given y observed so on and so forth and we can maximize L phi given y observed. Now, let us consider a case for bivariate normals. Now, consider a bivariate normal sample with one variable subject to non response y i 1, y i 2, the vector 
follows i i d bivariate normal mu equal to mu 1 mu 2 sigma equal to sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 sigma 1 2 sigma 1 2 are the off diagonal elements. So, sigma 1 1 is the variance of y 1 and sigma 2 2 is the variance of y 2 and sigma 1 2 is the covariance of y 1 y 2 and here i ranges from 1 to up to n. But assume that there are an extra p minus n univariate observations for y i 1. That means, y i 1 is a p dimensional vector whereas, y i 2 is a n dimensional vector or in other words p minus n observations of y i 2 is missing. In such a situation, how are we going to estimate mu and sigma? Now, we can factor the likelihood in terms of this that y i 1 y i 2 given mu sigma can be written as f of y or the it is it is basically the likelihood of or the density of y i 1 given mu 1 sigma 1 1 into the density of y i 2 given y i 1 that is the conditional density of y i 2 given y i 1 also beta 2 naught dot 1 beta 2 1 point dot 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1 where beta 2 naught dot 1 is mu 2 minus beta 2 1 dot 1 into mu 1 beta 2 1 dot 1 is sigma 1 2 by sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1 is sigma 2 2 minus sigma square 1 2 by sigma 1 1. Now, because it is a bivariate normal distribution the density of y i 1 given mu 1 sigma 1 1 follows normal mu 1 sigma 1 1 and the conditional density of y i 2 given y i 1 beta 2 naught dot 1 beta 2 1 dot 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1 follows a univariate normal with the mean beta 2 naught dot 1 plus beta 2 1 dot 1 into y i 1 comma the variance being sigma 2 2 dot 1. Now, given beta 2 naught dot 1, beta 2 1 dot 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1, we can always estimate what is mu 2 what or rather what is the relationship between mu 2. So, mu 2 is beta 2 naught dot 1 plus beta 2 1 dot 1 into mu 1. Similarly, sigma 1 2 is beta 2 1 dot 1 into sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 is sigma 2 2 dot 1 plus beta 2 1 dot 1 square sigma 1 1. So, my theta here is mu 1 mu 2 sigma 1 1 sigma 1 2 and sigma 2 2. Note that if I know all this I would be able to specify my mu and sigma. Whereas, phi here is mu 1 sigma 1 1 beta 2 naught dot 1 beta 2 1 dot 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1. Because of the principle of factoring, I can factor the likelihood into two parts and I can maximize this 2. So, I can maximize f y observed given theta by telling that f y observed given theta is f of the product of i runs from 1 to p f y i 1 given mu 1 sigma 1 1. So, mu 1 sigma 1 1 is coming from the first term of the factorization while beta 2 naught dot 1, beta 2 1 dot 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1 comes from the second form of the factorization which says that uh, y i the conditional density distribution of y i 2 given y i 1 follows a univariate normal. So, maximizing the first product gives my m l estimates for mu 1 sigma 1 1 maximizing the second product gives the m l estimate of beta 2 naught dot 1, beta 2 1 dot 1 and sigma 2 2 dot 1 and hence I can get mu 1 hat and sigma 1 1 hat which are the m l estimates of mu 1 and sigma 1 1. Similarly, I can get beta 2 1 hat 2 1 dot 1 hat sorry beta 2 naught dot 1 hat and sigma 2 2 dot 1 hat. So, once I get beta 
टू वन डॉट वन हैट बीटा टू नॉट डॉट वन हैट एंड सिग्मा टू टू डॉट वन आई वुड बी इन अ पोजिशन टू गेट द एस्टिमेट्स ऑफ म्यू टू हैट सिग्मा टू टू हैट एंड सिग्मा वन टू हैट देन आई कैन यूज द एस्टिमेटेड वैल्यू दैट इज म्यू आई टू हैट इज इक्वल टू वाई टू बार प्लस बीटा टू वन डॉट वन हैट वाई आई वन माइनस वाई वन बार सो दिस इज नथिंग बट द प्रेडिक्टेड वैल्यू इम्प्यूटेड फ्रॉम द लीनियर रिग्रेशन ऑफ द ऑब्जर्व वाई आई टू ऑन ऑब्जर्व वाई आई वन एंड यूजिंग दिस आइडिया ऑफ प्रेडिक्शन फ्रॉम द इम्प्यूटेड वैल्यू ऑफ लीनियर रिग्रेशन वी कैन हैव द इम्प्यूटेड वैल्यूज ऑफ वाई आई टू we would be doing an exercise in r where we would take a bivariate data with some observations missing and we would see how we can compute the missing observations so in today's session we learned about the complete case analysis and the available case analysis in context to missing data we also learned about how to factor the likelihood and use maximization on the individual terms so that the to instead of maximizing the complete likelihood which is a complicated function we can maximize individual functions individual likelihood functions and get the estimates we also used this idea while estimating some missing values in context to a bivariate normal distribution this idea would be followed up later after we are through with the theoretical parts of missing data where we would see how to write a code and implement this factorization technique in r